Y'all hung in with me this long. We gotta get some cornbread in the oven. That's the only thing we're lacking here. And I'm not sure if I got everything out, but y'all know how I am. I'll run around and go get it. Okay, first thing what I like to do is I use a cast iron skillet. And this one is like a number 10. It's a big one. Y'all see? <laughs> and um, anyway, I, I keep mine all down, okay? And I'm turning the heat, the fire on it, okay? I'm going to try to get y'all down a little bit. Y'all may not see me good. But at least you'll be able to see this cornbread, right? The kern bread. Maybe, yeah. Okay, so now in this bowl, let me turn. I got to turn my YouTubers on down so they can see in this here bowl. And I love to use one that I can pour out of, okay, y'all? Um, I've got that. I'm going to mix up my dry ingredients. But in the meantime, you can add any fat here. You can add shortening, which I normally do, but I'm just going to add some oil today because I'm right here. Maybe like a quarter cup, okay? Just like that. And then baking up. I love this baking up, baking grease that y'all turned me on to. I sure do appreciate it too because I love it. I don't have to cook bacon and all the time. So some kind of oil or fat, and then I love to put bacon because it really flavors that cornbread really, really well. So that's the only reason I do it. All right, y'all. So what I'm doing is I'm just heating this up real good like that. Just now I'm gonna turn this back off, okay? And into this bowl, this one right here, I'm going to put, move my milk out of the way. I just had to run up to the dollar store and get some milk. I was out. I'm out of everything. I got to get to the store soon, don't I? Yeah. All right, let's see. I need me a cup measure. We're going to do two cups of yellow cornmeal. Mine's just all purpose. We all have so many different recipes for cornbread, don't we? Two cups of yellow cornmeal. That was one. And here goes two. All right. And now I'm going to reach in behind y'all and I'm going to grab me a cup of all purpose flour. Okay. So y'all just excuse me, excuse me. Okay. I got me a cup of all purpose flour coming in there. This is my mama's recipe. So I kind of know it by heart. This big pan. When I, you can cut this down and I do a small pan sometimes for John and me too. But Today, we're going to do this big pan. Yes, we are. Okay, so now we're going to put us a tablespoon of, now we're going to do two tablespoons of baking powder. Okay, two of these. So one and two. And then baking soda, which gives you a little hint, we're going to use buttermilk and sweet milk in there. Um, I love that flavor. So if you don't have buttermilk, you can just use regular milk and then you can just skip this baking soda. So we're going to do one teaspoon of the soda because it reacts with the acid in the buttermilk to rise, okay? That's the only reason you add that. Now at this point, I like to stir this to get all the soda and the powder. Oh, we need some salt. We better not forget that salt, right? two teaspoons of salt and I used iodized sea salt I told y'all okay now we're gonna stir it around now we're stirring all right y'all into this I am going to y'all hang on I'm reaching around behind y'all I'm gonna add two cups of buttermilk Two cups. I had to stop. John and I both had to stop and we uh, had to go clean out that freezer. <laughs> and then we had to run it to the freezer down in the canning kitchen. And thank goodness I had cleaned it out because electricity had been out in there. Y'all remember that? And so it was nice and empty for us. That's all we do is shuffle. We seem like we work three times harder than we plan on. Do y'all? Do y'all do that too? Okay, y'all, that was two cups of buttermilk. And now we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, 
two cups of milk. I mean, one cup of milk, excuse me. Two cups of buttermilk, one cup of milk. Excuse me. I was slaughtering that, wasn't I? Okay, now, I got two eggs, two of these fresh eggs, and I always break them over here just to make sure I don't get a shell. One, two. Got a beautiful one. That one came from a... Rhode Island red chicken, and that one came from an Easter egg or an Americana. I love those blue-green eggs. Okay, y'all, get everything out of the way so y'all can see what I'm doing. All right, this pan, it's kind of hot. Y'all see I'm going to do most of the drippings out of it, but I left some, all right? Now we're going to turn this, this burner on screaming hot high, okay, because we want to get that heated up. So it'll, when you pour it, you'll hear it sizzle and start making that crispy crust. One of these times we need to talk about seasoning and how to keep your cast iron seasoned. One of these here days, we'll get around to that. All right, y'all. Y'all saw that came together just that quickly. I like to get this nice and hot. Nice and hot. While John, while it's heating up, I'm gonna tell y'all real quick what we did. We cleaned out the freezer out there. We checked on the little calf again, doing great. And then we were coming back from the freezer down there. It was so much in our stand-up freezer. John had to put it in the back of the truck. We had it in bags and such and he backed it down there then we unloaded it then we were walking back up here checking on the calf and what do you know there was jalapeno peppers all in the garden so i've got them over there i'm fixing to put some more peppers up when i get this in the oven <laughs> maybe this day's gonna end one day you think i don't know okay i'm gonna get y'all down here so you can see this cornbread it seems nice and hot it's actually smoking a little bit. I want y'all to try to hear it. All right, let's be quiet and see if y'all hear it. <gasps> I hope y'all heard that, how beautiful that sounded. Did y'all hear it? Y'all, I've got the oven on 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Screaming hot too, right? Cause I'll get this cornbread cooked really fast and be nice and tender on the inside. So I'm gonna spin y'all around to the oven so y'all see what I'm up to. Turn off my fire, grab my hot pan. Get my oven open real quick. And in it goes, and I'm gonna let it go for about 30 to 40 minutes till it gets nice and toasty. And I've known some people in the past, they'll let their cornbread get good and done. And when you push on the top of it and it doesn't give, that means it's done. And then they'll actually turn the broiler on and toast the top. I'm scared to do that. I'm scared I'll forget about it and burn up my cornbread. Y'all hear that? Let's see. Yeah, we turned it off. Ooh. Now you All right, you gotta go off. You're gonna drive us crazy. Look at this, y'all. Isn't that beautiful? You know how you can tell if it's done? You're gonna reach in and you're gonna push. Push on that cornbread, that hot cornbread. And if it, if it gives, then it's still not done in the middle. But if it doesn't and it springs back, then you know your cornbread is done. And it is hot. Yes, it is. I'm going to get this little hot pad one of you sent me to go on the end of that. I love that thing. It is handy. We've got to let this cool off a minute. And I always split mine out. And that's what I was letting y'all know. Because I taste it. If it stays in cast iron, I taste that iron on my cornbread. Plus, I flip it upside down and that bottom stays nice and crispy and crunchy like we like cornbread to be. 
Yeah, while I was waiting on the cornbread, I pickled those peppers that I grabbed real quick out of the garden. Aren't they pretty? Some of them had turned red. These are gonna be nice and hot because it's been so hot outside this summer, this August, so those are gonna be good and hot. The hotter it is and the drier it is, the hotter your peppers are. That's why I said that. Just in case y'all are wondering, like, what do you mean, Amy? Um, all right, so I'm trying to let this cool just a minute, y'all, and we'll flip it out on this plate. And one of y'all taught me this. You said slide a knife under there, even the knife you're gonna cut it with, and it'll keep the bottom from getting too steamed and leave it crispy too, which the bottom is gonna be, or the top is gonna be the bottom when it comes out. So, let's give it a minute just to cool down. All it needs, it just needs a few minutes to cool just a little bit and kind of release itself from your pan. If it's seasoned good enough, then it'll come out pretty as you please, just like that. And all I do is go run this under the hot water and wipe it out and I slide it right back in this oven and it's ready for next time. All right, guys, John's getting a shower. He's been up since 4 a.m. He had to run back up to the rock quarry and get more rocks today. So I'm about to get this cleaned up so he can eat and we can get in the bed. I'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye.